pistol. All right, guys, today we're gonna be talking about my ultimate pistol survival rig or setup and how you can replicate this system for yourself. Now, full disclosure, as always, before we get into this, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, the Instagram, all of that fun stuff. It is, the support is heavily appreciated. Two, this is not a dedicated, just pistol survival rig. There are a few other things I'm going to talk about that I run as ancillary kind of items for setup. So we'll keep that in mind. And two, this isn't the end all to be all or solve every single problem. This is just a setup that I like to run when I'm in the wilderness, particularly when I go out and uh, do photography or videography, like a lot of these intros and outros and B-roll of me in mountains and, you know, showing off the Alaskan environment. This is a system that I like to run for that as well. So this is a generalized solution for a lot of problems. So without any further ado let's jump into it take a look a closer look at everything involved with this setup all right let's start off with the actual firearm setup here so what you guys see is the backbone to this rig of course this is the ultimate pistol setup so it obviously has to have a pistol included so let's break down each one of these components as there are a few that are kind of hard to see but hopefully you can see them all kind of together so of course, obviously, the first and most predominant thing in this setup is going to be the handgun. Now it's very contentious and not everyone agrees about this setup, but for me, I am running a Desert Eagle in 50 Action Express, as you guys can see there. This is a big, crazy pistol that I think is actually pretty well suited to bear defense. Might not be the most practical tool for this solution, but it is a fun gun to run and a fun gun to carry. So a lot of people give me hell for this thing and I just say, keep it coming because I honestly enjoy running this pistol and uh, I'm not gonna stop running it because people don't like it. So anyways, that is the handgun. Okay, next thing on this setup is going to be a really solid knife. Now the knife is one of the big things that I think a lot of people should replicate because I know that a lot of people run chest rigs very similar to this one and this is in fact a Kenai chest rig. This is of course a custom for the Desert Eagle. This is a Kenai made by Gunfighters Incorporated or Gunfighters Inc. And uh, with this sheath setup or this holster setup, it allows you to easily mount other pieces of Kydex to it. So this is the knife. This is a 3DK, MAK, but the reason why I added um, a blade to this sheath setup is that a lot of times when I'm doing outdoor excursions, I run neck knives. And of course, if you run a chest rig like this, it is very difficult to run a neck knife properly without it kind of looking weird or without it being very complex or hard to draw. So the reason why I wanted to incorporate a Kydex sheath onto the rig, the holster itself, is so that I could have an easily accessible blade that was right there. I know where it's at at all times. And while it's not the easiest knife to put away, it is actually incredibly easy to draw, especially from the chest mounted position. So I think that this is something that a lot of people should do. I've never seen anyone else mount a knife to their chest rig system. I try to show this off, not just to like flex on people or show how cool I am, but honestly to help inspire people to do something very similar. Hopefully, like I said, that this uh, kind of gives you guys some inspiration because I think running a knife on a chest rig setup is very important because you should have a knife, at least a knife, especially if you're operating out in the wilderness. So um, yeah, that's why I wanted to choose, or that's why I wanted to show this off. And that is the knife in the setup. Once again, I just rigged mine up with some basic hardware. You guys can see here, I uh, just have a couple like uh, little washers and so I have just a couple nuts that are kind of Kydex specific and on the back, also just a couple screws and in between them one thing i will say if you are wanting to replicate this system make sure you add plastic washers or that you lock tight this system because i have experienced before i did the whole plastic washers this would rattle a lot especially because when you're walking obviously this rig is kind of jostling just a little bit so those micro vibrations would make your screws back out so if you do this either lock tight your screws or add plastic plastic washers. I added plastic washers or rubber washers to help lock it down. Okay, the next thing, and it's kind of hard to see because it drags the whole chest system to the 
ground um, and I'm actually gonna pop it off, but this is where I do genuinely keep it. So when this system is on my chest like this, this chest or this strap here wraps around my chest right about here and this little guy is usually not as far back as it is here, but I usually keep this guy right about here. So chest system sits like this. I keep this guy right here. Now what this is, for those who probably already know, it's a GPS. Most people are probably aware about that. But the reason why I like to keep my GPS there is two reasons. One, I don't tend to use GPSs that much. Believe it or not, I I really am pretty good when it comes to navigating on trails and I don't usually get turned around. But of course, being who I am, it does. I do go on a lot of trails in many different environments. So oftentimes I'm not familiar with every trail I go on. So usually I will have my GPS as kind of a backup. So my GPS and most garments as a whole have a kind of essentially breadcrumb feature, if you will. It's a kind of pinkish line that outlines wherever your GPS has been on and you've tracked. So it's a kind of backtrack feature where if you get turned around, if you get lost, you can look at your GPS and see your kind of breadcrumbs, if you will. Once again, this isn't a foolproof solution. I am aware the GPSs are battery powered and, you know, I'm not going to just say that if, you know, if you have this system, you'll never get lost. Obviously, that's not what I'm trying to say. Um, it's just a really good layer to have with me and when it comes to survival my biggest thing is having a lot of fail safes so that i never have to get put into a survival situation avoidance similar to you know self-defense situations in you know everyday life you know avoidance is key so trying to have hyper redundancy in regards to things such as in regards to things such as your navigation your travels are good this doesn't beat a map this doesn't say you don't need a map but there have been a few instances where I've been on a few mountains and you know the trail gets really um, unclear. And so on my track back, you know, um, when I've been trying to get off of mountains, I have gotten turned around before and luckily the breadcrumb feature on my GPS pointed me in the right direction. I was able to get back to the trail that I was on and instead of following another trail down into another area. So once again, I'm not perfect. I'm usually pretty good. Usually don't need the GPS, but every so often, especially on mountains when trails get really hard to see, having a, this type of feature is very nice or having a GPS on hand that's very accessible is very nice. So usually I will leave this attached to my chest rig. Now, as I mentioned, there are a few ancillary things. Obviously, what I talked about was a firearm, a pistol, and a, a GPS. That's obviously not everything you should have for survival. So something that I always have on my belt when I'm trekking is my personal survival kit or PSK. I've gone over this in many different videos. I'm not gonna go over the full contents here of this pack, but this is, like I said, lives on my belt, usually on the small of my back, and it has things like fire starters, once again, hyper redundancies, having three different fire starters, of course, my personal locator beacon. I never really go anywhere in the wilderness without a type of PLB or personal locator beacon. This is mine. And, you know, it has a small basic first aid kit, you know, just general uh, survival necessities, water purification tablets, uh, you know, tin or an aluminum foil, mylar blankets, all that kind of stuff is in here. Of course, like paracord, all that kind of fun stuff is all included in this kit. So it covers a lot of the seas of survivability. And then lastly, the other thing I will pair, sometimes I will roll a hatchet, but once again, if I'm doing mountains um, where we're going up over, you know, 3000 feet in elevation, I'm not going to carry things like hatchets for a couple reasons. One, as I've mentioned in high alpine survival videos, there's just not a lot of accessibility to trees so it doesn't make a lot of sense to have tools that aren't going to be reasonable or practical in use so if i'm going up in high elevations that's one reason i will not carry a hatchet and then another reason too is or of course the other reason is that i'm trying to reduce weight or cut back weight so if i'm going up once again if i'm doing a 3,000 foot elevation gain or you know even higher than that um, i'm not i'm going to try to reduce as much weight as i practically can obviously still want food still want water you know reasonable things but things like a hatchet are just less practical. So for me, so long as I can have a good solid knife like my 
my MAK and something like my Baco Laplander. It's a really lightweight setup that will allow me to process trees, you know, smaller wrist thick trees and be able to do things that I need to do if I need to build a makeshift shelter or if I need to, you know, like process some firewood, some light firewood. Obviously it's not perfect. And if I was going into a more in dense or tree dense environment, I usually do carry the hatchet in those regards. Uh, so anyways, those are kind of like, those are some of the reasons why I just run the saw and the knife uh, for mountain uh, or mountainous environments or situations. Okay, so that is essentially my ultimate pistol rig survival setup. Um, like I said, the biggest thing that I wanted to really mention and hit home on this video is I'm not saying you should go out there and buy a Desert Eagle and run a chest rig, but the couple things that I would hope a lot of people take away from this video is one, chest rigs are really awesome. If you do have the chance to run a chest rig, I would highly recommend it. They are super comfortable, especially if you're running a backpack. Uh, my two favorite methods to carry firearms, at least handguns, is a chest rig and a drop leg holster. So if I'm not gonna be running the drop leg uh, I will run the chest rig and like I said I think chest rigs are really cool not just because they keep your firearm very accessible very easily they also distribute the weight very well and as you can see between like throwing the GPS on here I can also attach a GoPro uh, with my bipod I can slide my bipod on this thing so I can have all kinds of things rigged off of my chest rig and once again because it's you know putting the weight on my shoulders it distributes that weight more evenly so it allows me to carry gear and then of course like I said you can just rig stuff to it and I would highly encourage at minimum rigging something like a knife. I usually also like I said would recommend rigging something like a GPS so that's quickly accessible in case you need it but at minimum running rigging a knife to your chest rig is something that I think a lot of people should do and I try to encourage it whenever I can because like I said you know you do want a knife accessible to you and easy to reach so I think this is one of the best solutions when you are running a chest rig for carrying a knife anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed this setup taking a look at it and all of that stuff as always guys god bless and i'm out